Hi, my name is Sarah Saldana, and today's date is February 4th, 2018. And in this video, I'm going to be going over information um, from this week's lab, the bacterial identification experiment that we did. So um, this week, we learned a lot about um, different types of media, which growth of organisms can be seen, compared, inhibited, um, pretty much used for biochemical testing. Um, the purpose was to ultimately observe the motility in two different types of bacteria, E. coli and S. epidermis. Uh, so the first media I'm going to go over is selective media, which has certain agents capable of growth for some organisms, but not others. Um, the benefit of this type of media um, is containing several different microbes when there are only a few of interest. Um, there's also differential media, which allows some microorganisms to grow but it's equipped with indicators that enable us to see visual differences between um, many microbes. So um, you can see, the, you can kind of compare the ones that you really want to see, and then um, you can identify the ones that you necessarily don't. Um, and lastly, we covered enriched media. And this type of media contains supplemental growth factors, which allow organisms that normally don't grow on typical media um, to be seen. So specifically, we were to use um, differential media, also known as motility agar. Um, the point of this was to observe bacteria um, move throughout the media. So after stabbing a sample of bacteria using aseptic techniques into the tube of the agar, um, it was incubated for 48 hours, and if growth of the bacteria was only seen along the line penetrated, um, then the test would yield negative results because then we it didn't move. Um, on the other hand, any turbidity throughout the gel would give a positive result for motility testing. So unfortunately, the reason why I'm explaining this rather than showing um, the procedure is because um, I accidentally mixed up some components from this lab with the other lab assigned this week. Um, so due to this, I wasn't able to actually complete the lab. Um, so unfortunately, I am just going to be going over um, the process and the results that I should have gotten. So um, for E. coli and S. epidermis, um, whether or not they would yield positive or negative results. Um, so e, e. coli is actually um, motile due to its features like flagella and its outer membrane containing peptidoglycan. Glycan. Um, therefore, E. coli should have yielded a positive result for the motility test if I was able to complete the lab. And as for S. epidermis, um, it would yield a negative result because it is non-motile. Um, this bacteria does not contain flagella, and it's categorized as a gram-positive bacteria, meaning that it has a thick peptidoglycan layer, a phospholipid bilayer, and no outer membrane. So pretty much it has no means of motility compared to the bacteria um, of E. coli. So again, the process really should have taken um, about 48 hours for incubation um, and then observing results. So E. coli would have been positive for motility and S. epidermis negative. 